Hi, I'm Brad from Make It. Today, I will make this reclaimed wood sawhorse desk using free pallet wood for the desktop and drawer fronts. This desk also features a hidden laptop storage compartment as well as an easy to access power strip storage section that allows you to plug in your devices and keep your wires hidden. When you're all done at your desk, you can tuck everything away and have a clutter free desk. Let me show you how to make it. I began by cutting my plywood sheet down to the exact dimension that I want my desktop to be, minus the trim along the outside. First thing to do was to measure out where the hidden compartment was to be located. Next was cutting and laying down where I wanted the pallet wood to be placed on the tabletop. I cut one row at a time. Once I had one row laid down, I took the row over to the table saw to straighten two edges and get the same width all the way down. I cut each row with a different width to switch things up a bit. I found this board with a hole in it and I thought it would be perfect to use for the cover of the hidden power strip compartment in the back of the tabletop. This would also allow the cables to pass through the cover when closed all while still tying into the rest of the desktop. Once I had everything cut out, I began to sand the boards down using 80 grit sandpaper before running them through the planer. I still want some of the unique texture of the pallet wood, so I'm just letting the sander do all the work and not pushing down too hard. I then ran the boards through the planer mainly to get everything down to the same thickness. Some of the boards I planed the top partially, some all the way, and some I just left sanded. It was really just based off what I thought looked good as I was planning. Once I had the right thickness, I marked a reference line on the planer for the rest of the boards. As you can see, there's a lot of character and surprises in this pallet wood. Next was to start on the hidden compartment storage. This is just a simple box that will be mounted to the underneath part of the desktop. There are two openings, one for the hidden storage and the other for the power strip. I glued everything up, nailed them together, and then added some screws on the bottom. I cut out two openings for the storage using a jigsaw and then mounted the storage to the desktop with some screws. The screws will be covered by pallet wood so I'm not too concerned about screwing them in from the top. I made sure to leave a little bit of overhang in the opening so I could use my router with a flush trim bit to get all the sides nice and even. I found these coffee table lift hinges on Amazon and thought they would work perfectly for the hidden storage door. I began by attaching the hinges to the underneath part of the door using the same board I had previously cut out. The main thing here is to make sure they are nice and parallel with each other. I then attached the door to the desktop. This was a little bit of a trial and error until I got a nice fit. I had some awkward angles while mounting the hinges to the desk and this ball and socket drill bit really came in handy for this. Next, I needed to make a bevel on all the edges of the door that may contact the desktop when opening and closing. If I skip this step, I would have a really hard time opening the door once everything is glued up. Using this oscillating belt sander came in real handy for this. However, this tool isn't necessary. Any type of sander will work. I think I put about a 25 degree bevel on all the edges. I also beveled the end of the board to help with closing the door. I needed a way to open the door, so later on in the video I will be adding a very simple pushing latch mechanism that allows me to open the door, but I thought it would be easier to make the holes for this now. I also secured washers to the underneath part of the door, which is what the latch will be pushing against instead of the bare wood. I placed some scrap wood in the storage area that had the same depth, so when I close the door the top is flush with the tabletop. I am now ready for the glue up. For the door, I made sure to only glue the top part and not the tabletop desk around the door. I also used a level and clamps to make sure my first row was straight. Then I was good to glue the rest of the boards. I used scrap 2x4 boards and clamped them along the top and allowed the glue to dry for a full day. With the glue dried, it was time for the moment of truth and see if the door would open. With a little prying, I was able to open the door successfully. There was a little bit of glue squeeze out that I cleaned up with an old chisel. Also, I noticed there was still a bit of contact of the door with the desktop when opening and closing. I went ahead and sanded those contact surfaces with my sander. I also completely forgot to bevel the entire back of the door that comes in contact with the cover of the power strip storage. Using my belt sander made quick work of this, so no biggie. With a little bit of patience, I was able to get the door to open and close with ease. 
Now onto the power strip compartment. I noticed it was going to be too shallow and I needed to give it more depth. I drilled out four holes in each corner from the inside, flipped the table over and then used my jigsaw to connect the holes. I made sure to leave an overhang again so I could clean up the edges with my flush trim bit. Since I had my palm router out, I cleaned up the tabletop edges and made them flush with the plywood. I switched my focus to the cabinet portion of this desk. I cut out four sides using the table saw and well, I made a square. I kept things simple and used pocket holes to make my square because they are quick, easy and strong and nobody will ever see them. You will notice I made a cutout right here for the top of the cabinet. This was to allow me to extend the depth of the power strip carpet from the desktop even further. However, I decided to make a few last minute changes which I will go over later in the video. So just ignore that hole for now. I then made an end frame for the back of the cabinet that will support the pallet wood paneling. This will be painted with the rest of the cabinet so I just used pine for this. I assembled the frame using pocket screws and then I glued and screwed the frame to the back of the cabinet. The sides of the cabinet were a little warped so I attached a temporary brace to straighten everything out before attaching the frame. Again I made the frame just a little larger than the length of the cabinet so I could then flush the edges with my router. I repeated this process for the front of the cabinet as well, except I made the frame the same thickness as the plywood. I did this for a couple reasons. It covers up the plywood in grain. Even though I will be painting this cabinet, I don't like how the paint looks on plywood exposed in grain. Also I wanted to extend the cabinet length a little further. You could use edge banding here as well. I flipped the cabinet over and attached four plywood risers so the cabinet wasn't too close to the ground. I also didn't want these risers to be seen which is why I spaced them away from the edges. I then drilled four holes in the center to attach shelf leveling feet. These work great for getting your cabinet to the right height and at the bottom is cloth so they won't scratch the floor. I made a 2 inch hole that will allow the power strip plug in to fit through. Now onto the drawers. I was able to make the three drawers using a single sheet of 2 by 4 foot 3 quarter inch plywood. I ripped everything down using the table saw and then made my link cuts on the miter saw. For the front and back sides of the drawer that go between the sideboards, I used two scrap pieces from the same plywood. I set my stop block to the exact width I needed and then placed the two scrap pieces up against the stop block and made the rest of my front and back cuts. This is a much easier process than having to subtract the side plywood pieces that aren't actually 3 quarter inches and you get a very accurate cut. I took all my sides over to the table saw to cut out the groove for the bottom paneling. I cut all the sides at once and then slid the fence over just a hair until I got a nice fit for my panel. Having a test piece for this comes in handy because it takes all the guesswork out of it. Again, I'm using pocket screws for the drawers. Nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. For the drawer assembly, I glued the front drawer facing to the sides and then screwed it together, making sure the pocket holes are facing the outside. I like using clamps for this process, so nothing will move on me. I can then slide in my quarter inch panel, which I cut off camera, followed by attaching the back facing drawer. I don't like using glue for the back because if I ever need to replace the bottom panel, I can still access it. For the drawer front, I use more pallet wood that I cut down to rough size. I then used this jig to get one straight side on each piece of pallet wood, which allowed me to cut the opposite side by just running it through the table saw. Once I had my drawer's face lined up to rough size, I followed the same process as a desktop, sanded them down and then ran them through the planer to what I thought they looked good. Next I glued them up. As I glued the boards together, I am really just making sure the front facing side is as flush as possible. I don't really need them to be perfect, that's what's nice about working with pallet wood. When the glue dried, I ran the back side of the drawer fronts through the planer to flatten them out and get them all the same thickness. I could then cut the drawer fronts to their final dimensions. Here I am using a table saw sled to cut one side and then use my stop block to cut the three panels to their final length on the miter saw. For opening the drawer, I am cutting a notch out on the top. To do this, I made a template so I could get all three drawer notches to match. I cut the notch out with a jigsaw. I decided to go ahead and add the trim around the desktop using more pallet wood. I glued the trim on, 
threw a few brad nails in it to hold it in place long enough so I could clamp them to the table. This desk was already taking much longer than expected, so I made a quick and simple latch that will open the hidden compartment using a bolt and nut. I cut the bolt down to size, then countersunk a hole that will allow the nut to be below the surface of the desk. This isn't fancy by any means, but it will be hidden from plain sight, so it will work for now. This one bolt is just fine for opening the door, so I didn't need the second hole that I had previously drilled out. Off camera, I placed the desktop with the storage compartment on top of the cabinet, and I didn't quite like how tall the desk stood up. So I decided I would lower the hidden compartment into the top of the cabinet by cutting out a hole on top. However, I couldn't just cut out the hole because I had pocket screws that I used to secure the two side panels of the cabinet. So here I'm drilling support screws on the sides for the top panel so that I can then remove the pocket screws that were interfering with my cut that I needed to make. Since this cabinet will be painted, I will simply be able to cover the screws with wood filler and nobody will ever know they're there. With the pocket screws removed, I can then make my cut. I used a sanding block to smooth the edges and square up my corners. I added two cross supports, one in the middle and one in the back. The one in the back will also be part of the bottom of the power strip compartment. I took the back support board and rigged up a base that will be part of the bottom of the power strip compartment. I created a channel that the power strip can sit in and have the cord stick out the bottom. Before mounting the base back into the cabinet, I went ahead and painted it black, which is going to be the color of the power strip compartment. I decided to make a sawhorse that would hold up the other side of the table. This part is completely optional. You could also use regular table legs instead. I have seen other sawhorse tables before and I think they are unique looking, which is why I'm incorporating this in my project. I am using dimensional lumber found at my local home center. I cut them to rough length and then ran them through the jointer and planer. Once I had everything down to the right thickness, I cut them down to their exact dimension using the table saw and miter saw. With everything cut out, I could then move on to making my joinery cuts. For the top part of the sawhorse, I cut out two notches which the legs will fit into. I don't have a dado set so I had to make a lot of little passes through the table saw. I then cut a 45 degree angle on each side of the cross beam to give it a cleaner edge. Next was to cut the tenon of the bottom of the legs to fit into the leg base. Again, I used my table saw to make a lot of little passes for the length and depth part of my tenon. Afterwards, I cleaned up my tenons with a chisel. I could then move on to cutting out the mortise in the feet. I sketched the outline of the mortise and then used my drill press with a Forstner bit to cut out the majority of the mortise. However, I seem to have lost the video for this part. With the majority of the mortise cut out, I could then chisel out the rest. I went halfway through, flipped the base over, and then chiseled out the rest. This was my first time doing a mortise and tenon, so they weren't the prettiest, I'll admit, but practice makes perfect. I completed the rest of my mortise and tenons using the same process and then did a quick test fit to make sure everything lined up and looked good. I moved on to forming the base. Here I'm moving a small section on the bottom part of the base to form two small feet. I wanted to put a large angle on each side of the feet so I removed a large chunk of the angle with my miter saw and then sanded the rest of the angle with my oscillating belt sander. This would work better with a bandsaw, but I don't have one and my jigsaw blade is not long enough. I then start to form the leg uprights in the middle crossbeam. I decided to put a small arc in the middle crossbeam so I placed a couple nails, one at the end and another in the middle, to help hold my flexible ruler while I drew the arc. It seemed to work pretty well. I then cut everything out with my jigsaw. I made sure to cut on the outside of the line so I could then clean everything up using my oscillating sander. Finally, I used my router with a round over bit to soften up the edges. Now I was on to filling all my screw holes, nail holes, and any other imperfections with the wood filler. After wood filler, I moved on to sanding everything. I started with 80 grit sandpaper and moved my way up to 220 grit sandpaper. For the desktop and drawer front finish, I used a water-based polyacrylic from Minwax. I really wanted to keep all the original colors from the wood and this finish was pretty true to color. I stained the inside of the drawers with my favorite early American stain and for the contrast I painted everything white. I went ahead and assembled the sawhorse together. I removed the painter's tape that I used in the areas that was going to be contacted by glue. It was pretty sturdy by itself but I added wood glue at all the joints for extra strength. 
Off camera, I ended up painting the feet white and then went over everything with a clear coat of polyacrylic as well. With everything dry, I can start assembling the desk. I began by attaching the drawer hinges to the side of the drawer and cabinet. I used two boards to help hold the cabinet drawer tracks in place as I screwed them together. Everything fit like it's supposed to. To attach the drawer faces, I used two washers to act as spacers on the bottom and in between each drawer face. I also used playing cards for the spacers on the sides. Once everything was lined up, I used a clamp to hold the drawer face in place so I can then remove the drawer and screw the panel to the drawer. Because I'm dealing with pallet wood and I didn't completely flatten the drawer panels, I had to add a few more clamps to hold them flat against the drawer while I screwed them together. Here I'm using Craig screws because they are the only 1 inch long screws that I have in the shop. The piece of wood that I used for the power outlet cover was much skinnier than the rest of the desktop. I decided to fix this issue by using rare earth magnets as spacers as well as holding the cover into place. I used a Forstner bit that was the same size as my magnets and drilled a hole where I needed the magnets to be on the desktop. I used this dowel locator pin that has a point on the top and set it in the hole. I then put the cover on and pressed down firmly which then showed me where I needed to make a hole for the underneath cover. I drilled the hole on the bottom part of the cover little by little until I got a nice flush fit on the top of the tabletop desk. I then used CA glue to hold the magnets in place and this actually worked really well. For the back of the cabinet, I placed more pallet wood that I cut and finished off camera. I just used brad nails in the back to hold these in place. I could then add my power strip. I added a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch plywood along with a quarter inch strip of plywood and mounted it on the top of the sawhorse. This allowed me to secure the sawhorse to the underside of the desk. I also covered the outside part of the hidden compartment area with a quarter inch plywood that I stained the same color as the inside of the drawers. I used wood glue as well as CA glue to help hold the plywood strip in place until the wood glue could dry. Finally, I mounted the desktop to the cabinet by securing it from the underside of the support strip inside the cabinet. For some last minute adjustments, I added paste wax to the edges of the door to smooth the opening and closing. I also added a bottom bevel using my router to the front of the door to make it easier to lift up. And that's it for this one. Thank you all for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. For more information on the desk, check the video description. Also, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, then go ahead and post them in the comment section below. If you like this video, then hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.